We will take a look uh, more closely at the permissions when dealing with Docker. And here in our example uh, Docker Compose file, first we will be creating uh, volumes. For the volume, we will bind the directory home container inside of our container into the volume, which is called uh, my data. Later, we are creating uh, this volume uh, here. In the Docker file, first we are starting uh, with the Alpine image, then we are creating one directory home container, and then we are changing the ownership of this directory. Afterwards, we are continuing as a user guest. And let's now try to run this uh, and build uh, this uh, web service by issuing uh, Docker Compose build web. And the next thing we'll do is uh, to run uh, a shell inside of this container. This we'll do in order to see the uh, group and user ownership inside of the files of the container. So we'll type docker compose run, then we'll remove this container, it's a temporary one, and for this web service, inside of this container, we'll run a shell. As we saw, automatically Docker creates, uh, the first time it's used, this uh, uh, permanent uh, volume, which is called permissions my data. And now, inside we see that everything is owned by root, and we can go to home directory, Inside, uh, we see that we have uh, our container and it's owned by the guest user. If we type ID, we see actually we are guests with the following 405 ID. The explanation why this container directory is created with the ID of 405 is because we change the ownership at the stage of creating our container. Inside of the container, our guest user is having the following UED, and uh, this means that we can uh, create files inside of this folder. So we create one file, uh, .txt, and this file will be preserved in our uh, volume. This means that if we exit the container and once again start the container, it will create an, another container and go to the home directory and then to the container directory, we should be able to see our file that's why the volumes are uh, so beneficial. They preserve uh, the contents of files and data, and they be can be connected to uh, containers. All right, the next thing we would like to take a look at is the bind mount. In this example, we are binding our files inside of our local directory to the home container, which is inside of the container. We'll proceed with the same Docker file. So I'll just build the web service as before. Right, and now let's run a bash shell inside of the container and take a look at the files. As you can see, again, everything is owned by root because uh, this is the user the image is built upon. And now we can go uh, to the home folder and we see that inside of the home folder, the user and group ownership of the container directory is uh, 405 and 1001. If we go back to our terminal, we can check once again that this is the case. What's more interesting is that uh, the difference uh, between the volumes and the bind mounts is that uh, whatever kind of changes we are making to the bind mounts, they will be reflected inside of the container. So if I remove uh, the file.txt and go to the container, inside of uh, the container directory, we don't have uh, this file anymore. And now to the permissions. We can choose to change the permissions directly inside of the container or beforehand to set up the permissions inside of our local directory. This means that if we would like to change the ownership recursively for all the files and folders, and we're using root, root uh, for all the files in this uh, current directory we are residing at. And now we see that there are owned by root and root because uh, this is the identificator of the zero and for this user this automatically now will reflect the visibility of the files inside of our container if i go to the container now and type ls minus n we see the changes are reflected and if i try to create one file 
we see permission denied. This is because the directory is already owned by root and this is one very common problem which occurs when working with bind mounts and uh, having incorrect permissions.